Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. Today we have invited someone very special in our studio today. He is the CEO of the biggest live stream service in Asia and the founder of Mithril, Mr. Jeffrey Huang. Welcome, sir. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> so, starting off, I have to I have to ask you. Mithril Myth was uh, listed on Binance just a few weeks ago. So, how how's it, how are you guys doing so far and how did it all happen? Um we're doing not so good. Like, like everybody else, it's a bear market, but I feel good. I feel mm -hmm. damn good because um, Binance is, uh, you know, it's the, one of the biggest exchanges in the world. And uh, I've always looked up to CZ mm -hmm. in this, in this uh, crypto space. And um, I'm just happy to be listed there. And, you know, one of the few projects in the last few months. Mm -hmm. Uh, what about the Leaser report then? I heard that there was a, a report launched on behalf of Binance. That's, I think, uh, Binance is leading the industry. Like, so they did, um, that took a lot of DD. They did a lot of DD. It, it almost felt like, uh, you know, it was crazy. Uh, but we, we did the research report with them and we went through a lot of, uh, of due diligence. And uh, at the end of it, I feel it's like it's industrial grade or it's, it's like, um, it's worthy. It's a very good um, research report. Mm -hmm. So um, you've been in the entertainment business for more than two decades, two, 25 plus years, right? Yeah. So, and uh, that relates a lot to the content creation, content rights. And uh, the re I believe that the reason why you guys, you decided to uh, get together the whole Mithril project was because that you saw a pro problem within the industry. So could you please tell us what the under underpinning problem of the industry is then? Okay. Um, yeah, so entertainment business, 20, 20 plus years, uh, music, movies, TV, uh, we get royalties. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I believe in IP rights. Uh, and so um, the one thing right now, the one type of content that you don't get paid for is personal content. Mm -hmm. Personal content meaning your pictures, your photos, your selfies, whatever you're doing on social media, mm -hmm. like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Cena Weibo, Twitter. You, you're giving away your personal content for free. They're making rev revenue off of it, you know, ads and whatnot, but they're not revenue sharing it. So I wanted to reward all of us, you know, the content creators, and uh, build an ecosystem where everybody gets reward for their content. Yeah. So uh, simply put, it's Instagram, Snapchat, all the uh, social networking uh, platforms with a boosted compensation uh, system infrastructure, right? So then. Uh, could you elaborate further on the services that the Mithril platform provides via its apps or uh, products maybe? Okay, so um, we had a proof of concept or MVP, minimum viable product. Uh, we did a, an app called Lit mm -hmm. early on to test the, the, the system mm -hmm. out, this ecosystem out. And basically, you know, you post your photo, your video on there. Uh, if you get unique views, um, you earn Mithril. And um, that's how the, the Mithril goes out, right? That's how it's earned. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we are building a Myth ad network mm -hmm. so that uh, people with uh, Myth can buy the ads. And, and then like, so for instance, if you go inside uh, the Lit app or if you went inside any, any app, social app, um, you, you would see, you know, maybe a, a, an ad when you get in there or when you look into the content, you see ads. Mm -hmm. And those ads will be, uh, um, you know, bought, bought with Myth. And then uh, that basically you earn the Myth from the ads, right? So... Um, that's pretty much social mining. It's 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 basically YouTube's model mm -hmm. where they're 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 rev sharing the ads except done for personal content on social networks. So um, you mentioned about the social mining concept, which is the core uh, well mining model, the consensus yeah. model that the uh, Mithril platform uh, utilizes. So uh, digging deeper into the platform, uh, what users are usually uh, interested in is at the actual rates of the rewards so <laughs> so um i i would give a, a a broader sense because it's it's like um we do have algorithms we are adjusting them we're trying to figure out exactly what's the uh, optimum and then uh, we do put a mining difficulty on it um but i would say it's it's similar to youtube or other or other internet ad rev which is about uh, a thousand unique views will earn you anywhere between a dollar to seven dollars US mm -hmm. if you peg it to USD. Yeah. So that's all the same with the pictures, the videos. Pictures, videos. As long as you get unique views that are not fraudulent or <laughs> not botting or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, you you will get you know anywhere between a dollar to seven dollars US for a thousand views. So when the the white paper white paper was published and the project was launched, uh, it was scheduled to launch a beta app called Lit. 
However, on App Store, it's not available currently, okay. whereas PyPy is. Okay, so Lid is now PyPy. Mm -hmm. um, everybody keeps going, ah, why you, you know, why the <laughs> fuck you change the name or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, one, uh, the Lit, this, this thing, uh, it has like multiple people that are trying to claim the copyright to Lit, mm -hmm. L-I-T, mm -hmm. which I think is, is ridiculous, but uh, a lot of litigation with that. And, um, and, and uh, I think the lit, the lit app, the adoption rate was okay, mm -hmm. but uh, the young social media, the hit thing right now is something more like TikTok, mm -hmm. you know, makes it short music video clips, and ours is called PyPy, Pi, of course, and the DAU, MAU, the daily active users, monthly active users, is much higher, uh, retention is much higher with this type of social media, so um, that's kind of direction it went, and now it's called PyPy, Pi, so. It, it's a silly question, but I have to ask you, what does Pi Pi stand for? The name so of Pi, it? So Pi Pi in, in, in <laughs> Chinese is like, you know, maybe take a snap. Oh, you know, uh, okay. Or shoot something. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty simple to understand if it's Chinese. But yeah, if it's English, then yes, yeah, it's, it's Apple Pi Pi or Cherry Pi <laughs> Pi, whatever. P-I-E, P-I-E. And uh, I heard in other languages, it, it means a lot of other crap, but you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you guys changed the, app, the, the direction of the app because of the uh, user satisfaction, the trend issue. So I have to ask you, how's the user satisfaction, user base acquiring is going within the PyPy platform? I think the, the overall rate, it's gonna be much larger, mm -hmm. uh, multiple, multiple times larger. I think, uh, but like, it was a proof of concept meaning uh, Mithra is an ecosystem, mm -hmm. so we're not in we're not in the uh, business of building apps. We're mm -hmm. not going to do that. We're partnering, so we just partnered a new partner, Yemos. It's called mm -hmm. Yemos. It's a it's like an anonymous social network. It's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. I I, I never been on an anonymous <laughs> network, but now now I am. I'm yeah. testing it out. So right now it's PyPy, uh, Yemos that you can mine socially mine it, mm -hmm. or in the future we're just going to call it you know Mithra mining. We're not going to call it social mining anymore uh, because we've identified. Uh, ways of integrating Mithril into apps that aren't social apps. Mm -hmm. But you can basically mine as long as you're doing something that it's the most valuable action that the, the app needs. But then in return, you know, we, us allowing these apps to socially mine, we bring them our community. Mm -hmm. but, and then what do they give us back is that they allow our Myth ad network uh, to be plugged in mm -hmm. so that we can show Myth, myth bot ads on their, on their apps and things so, like that. So moving on to an another product, uh, launched in the uh, uh, Mithril platform is uh, the Mithril Vault. Okay. Well, it's a hot wallet system. However, uh, I'd like to hear from you. What are the services or the uh, no, utilities that the Mithril Vault provides to its users? So, um, they call it a wallet, right? Everybody calls these 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 yeah. application <laughs> wallets, but a wallet is like what's in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. That that's that's a wallet. So, I mean, once the wallet's an app and it's on the website, like Vault is. It could be much more, uh, not complicated, but way more feature added. So initially, yeah, it just holds your crypto, right? Mm. Uh, but later on, it'll be shifting, or we already do have shifting inside. So you can change it from Mithril to ETH, ETH to Mithril. We're adding pairs. I think uh, Binance BNB is already in there, so you can take your Myth, turn it into BNB, BNB into Myth. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we're gonna add more pairs. And uh, aside from that, aside from shifting these like, kind of thing, uh, there's a project that I really like re recently. It's called Compound. Mm -hmm. And basically, it allows you to, um, you know, save your uh, crypto inside and earn interest on it, mm -hmm. or hedge, and do other things. But basically, I see more and more uh, what you call it, you know, decentralized finance projects and things like that that will all kind of like merge together under this wallet term. And that's why we didn't call ours a wallet, right? Mithra mm -hmm. Wallet. It's called Vault because we wanted to. I, even Vault, I think it's, it's a more broader term. It's a broader term, yeah. right? Because I think a lot of things might end up inside. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're, that's what we're focused on doing inside the vault. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, so getting a bit to uh, the myth token itself, uh, the application and the usage, the practicality of it. Uh, if I gain myth tokens uh, by taking part in PyPy Pi platform, how would I use them? How would I spend them? Okay. So uh, in Taiwan, we are already accepted at some coffee shops. Mm -hmm. And then uh, aside of the coffee shops, uh, celebrity vintage clothing mm -hmm. uh, called Instinct. And uh, aside from them is we are talking to like movie theaters and other places. I, I believe we could uh, increase the adoption of, of crypto or at least Mithril in Taiwan. But like I predict or I think in the future, it doesn't matter. We're all in it together, all the cryptos. When, it, when we're talking about like use cases for crypto, if you accept Bitcoin, Litecoin, 
or Binance Coin or Mithril, you're pretty much accepting all the all the more relevant myth, the, mm-hmm. all the more relevant uh, crypto coins. Because uh, if I get a mass adoption of, of crypto in Taiwan, mm-hmm. and you bring Binance to Taiwan or you bring Bitcoin to Taiwan, you can easily shift it in your wallet and just spend it anyways. Mm-hmm. So like if I go to Brazil and in Brazil they only accept Litecoin. Or, or Bitcoin, and then I get there, I have myth only. I just shift it in my wallet and buy Bitcoin or Litecoin and spend it. So crypto adoption, I think we're all in it together. So I really love asking this question to the uh, leaders of the industry. So uh, in 10 years, in a decade, if time passes, how is the world going to be different? You know, If I were to travel to Thailand, maybe, would I be settle, setting uh, my uh, travel budget in uh, crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum, maybe? How's the world going to look like? Mm, I don't, I don't, I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. I think uh, if I had to guess, uh, Bitcoin's going to be around, uh, Ethereum's going to be around, and uh, I hope Myth is around. I don't know about anybody else. Uh, Binance will be around. All right. So, so, so us four. Um, I don't know about anybody else. And then, and then, um, I think uh, by that time, um, yeah, I think I think people won't even be thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, like it's just normal. Mm-hmm. So D apps no long, long no longer are going to be called D apps, just apps. I I don't think it should be called D apps. I, mm-hmm. I I don't really even uh, I don't believe in most of these D apps. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a like I said, there's a couple projects out there that I'm like, cool, that's cool. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, something else is going to get created. Mm-hmm. I mean, 2018 is almost over. So in 2019, we'll probably see something really cool. To that every year afterwards from mm-hmm. now on. We're gonna see cool shit and um, and better use use cases of blockchain technology, um, even for uh, ourselves, like mm-hmm. like Mithril. Um, from what we've learned in the last year, mm-hmm. uh, we are applying it moving forward, and I think uh, we have some really interesting projects in the pipeline. So uh, you mentioned about how the 2019 is gonna be. So the future roadmap for 2019 in the Mithril platform is planned for a uh, ad network as well as a uh, vault merchant expansion. So uh, finishing up on the interview, could you uh, share us your future plans for 2019 maybe? Okay, so the two you just mentioned, uh, vault and uh, the Myth ad network. Vault, it'll just get better. Like uh, it'll, it'll get more robust, it'll have more services, more features. Uh, kind of like I just mentioned, hopefully we can partner with Compound and do some stuff there. Um, on the Myth Ad Network, I, th- I believe that kind of completes the, the, the social mining idea. Actually, uh, the Myth Ad Network will complete Mithril mining mm-hmm. ecosystem, which uh, will allow people to um, buy ads with Myth, and then um, you know the people can mine the Myth, and mm-hmm. then uh, it'll complete that, that, that ecosystem. And I think um, that's very interesting. Um, other projects in 2019, one that, that might have been mentioned here and there, is called Machi X, mm-hmm. and it's it's an IP social exchange, and IP exchange because I'm from the entertainment business. Mm-hmm. So f- what I've learned in this last year in blockchain and, and and been been in it, and looking at the technology and the the culture, the attitude of decentralization, consensus, all these like ad, uh, ideas that, that are there, uh, I've brought some of that back to, mm-hmm. to traditional entertainment, and I, I want to um, tokenize music song rights like. Uh, our tagline is uh, nobody buys music anymore, they, they buy music rights. Mm-hmm. So if you like a song, you don't buy it, nobody buys it. They, they get a subscription on Spotify or KKBox or mm-hmm. somewhere to listen to it, right? But I think like if you really like a song in the future, you go and buy the rights. Mm-hmm. And the rights will be for sale, they'll be tokenized, you know, you could buy one of a millionth of a, of a song or however much you want. You probably share the value, the royalties and whatnot. I think there's synergies. You can definitely like once I buy the song, right? Maybe I was gonna tell you about my favorite artist, anyways. Oh, Big Bang, go buy Big Bang's song, you know, or listen to Big Bang's new song. Mm-hmm. But once I'm a, I'm an owner of the song, I'll push it harder. I'll, I'll tell more of my friends, my my school or my my coworkers at work, mm-hmm. hey, check out Big Bang's new song. And then <laughs> I got I got the music rights. I'll be like, hey, you should get some too, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, kids uh, are getting a little disenchanted, or the next generation is a little disenchanted with the. Uh, old financial system like stocks things like that and mm-hmm. and i don't think it's very transparent it's a very old boys club and i think right now crypto or last year 2017 and this year 2018 i think we've woken up to realize that you know a lot of these utility tokens a lot of these these tokens out there are not very kosher not very mm-hmm. good and i think everybody wants and then like uh, recently in the last three four months it's always been about the stable coin mm-hmm. 
And I think in 2019, that's where we'll see tokenization of value, like real value, like I'm, I'm, like I'm talking about right now, music rights, movie rights, TV rights, and you tokenize it. I think uh, it's more interesting. And I think that's what I see for 2019. Well, that is all the time we have today. Thank you so much for your time. Hey, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Jeffrey Huang, the founder of Mithril. Thank you for watching.